All right, we're back, uh, ELE 210. And now we're talking about um, exponents and logarithms. Hopefully by now you've experienced some of this uh, magic and wonder in um, Tech Math 1. I think that's where they talk about it. Um, but very basically, uh, if you're familiar with any exponential fu uh, function, like compounding interest of money or anything, or, you know, unconstrained population growth, um, let's say you have something and it doubles every so often, you're going to get a curve that goes like this, um, and, and the more you got, the more it grows, and so the slope of the curve, if you will, the, the rate of growth gets higher and higher and higher, uh, the more you've got. And so um, there's a particular exponential function based on, um, uh, I don't know if it's called the euler mascheroni constants, but a, a, a constant due to Leonard Euler called E. It's about 2.718. And um, this is, it's, but it's, it's like any exponential thing. It could be, you know, 10 is a base or E is a base or 2 is a base or whatever. What you'll see is as, um, as the quantity is um, continually uh, being raised to the exponent, it gets bigger. And then as you, as you take that and raise it to the exponent, it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and gets bigger at a faster rate the higher you go. Because, you know, basically you keep multiplying it by itself. Um, you know, if this is 2 to the x, then you start out, you know, with um, uh, 1 16th and you double it, you get 1 8th, and you double it and you get 1 4th. And, um, you know, pretty soon you start to actually see something here. You double it, you get 1 half, and then you get 1. You know, right there, and and then you double it again. You would get um, you would get two, and then you would get four, and then you would get eight, and you know, sixteen, and that sort of thing. Um, and e does the same thing with two point seven one eight. You know, it, it it's it kind of goes that way. So, exponential functions are pretty powerful in dynamical systems, uh, whether it's uh, mechanical motion or electronics or um, fluid dynamics or um, diffusion equations or that sort of thing. Uh, this, this is an important function. And you can see that as it, as it grows, it just grows. You know, nothing succeeds like success when it comes to exponential functions. Um, what I've done here, I've taken the numbers, uh, taken the numbers from minus five to, um, to to positive three in steps of 0.2, and I've computed e to the x, and this is in a, a Google sheet, and I've computed e to the x, and then I've also um, I, I've then taken the um, the law, I've taken the natural log of e to the x. So I've taken the natural log of e to the x, which if you remember, um, na natural log or any log function is the inverse of its exponential function. So to say it's an inverse, that is, as, as this number here grows, we put in x and the, and the number gets the, uh, you know, e to the x gets bigger and bigger as we increase x, well, um, this function, um, the log of x, um, does just the opposite. As you put in bigger and bigger numbers, you, the numbers you get out are, are like the original numbers you put in to the exponent. So the um, natural log of... Uh, of, of a given number uh, ha follows a curve or, you know, log to the base 10 or log to the base 2. It follows this curve where um, the bigger it gets, uh, the more slowly it grows. And when we think about uh, decibels, um, the, the decibels are a logarithmic function. 
And what's kind of tough about decibels is if you want three decibels, uh, that is basically a doubling of the power. So if you're already at 50 watts and you need three more dB, you've got to get another 50 watts somewhere um, and double your power. So it's uh, the log function goes up and uh, you have to work like the Dickens to get it to go um, higher. Whereas the exponential function is just takes off and doesn't take much at all to get it to go higher. Now, to say that they are inverse functions is to say that if um, if I took the uh, the origin, say this this point right here on this graph and this point right here on this graph, and brought them together, I'd have a curve. Um, for, for just like e to the x here for ln of x, it would be a mirror image and the mirror would be right around the uh, y equals x line. There would be a, just a, a, a mirror curve over here like that. Okay, you, you can see it here. Um, the scale may not be the same, but <clears throat> um, it, it's in, I guess it's important for you to understand that um, an exponential function has an inverse function, and that is the log function. And a log function has an inverse function, that's an exponential function. So um, that's all the first page of our, our sp spreadsheet says. If I go to the diode equation, I look at how, um, how a diode behaves. Um, the diode... Uh, is one of these things that nothing succeeds like success. If we, here's the voltage across a diode. If we reverse bias the diode, we get barely any current at all. It's down in the nano amps or, or yeah, down in the, the billionths of an ampere. But once we get up to like 0.45, you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 volts across the diode, all of a sudden the current starts to take off and we get lots of current to flow. Um, so now this, if you look at this scale here, this is in amperes. This line right here is 100 amperes, all right? So I'm really emphasizing it here. But uh, when you put a volt across this particular diode we're looking at, it's, it's got about um, three amps, I believe, um, flowing through it. And so um, this is a major... Well, we can look over here at our data, and let's say uh, we get positive one volt. Yeah, we've got 3.57 amperes flowing through the uh, flowing through the diode. So it's hard to get more than 0.7 volts across a diode. Now, now, sometimes the diode includes a little bit of resistance in the body of the diode in the crystal, and so you can get more than uh, 0.7 volts across um, a diode. So. You know, they're not just the diode themselves. There's, like in everything else in the real world, there's a little bit of resistance uh, built into that thing. Um, so there's the diode equation, and the diode equation is an exponential equation. This one's called the ideal diode equation, and the voltage here is in the exponent of E. So you know the, the this current's going to take off like the Dickens once V, the voltage, gets high enough. K is the uh, Boltzmannian constant. Uh, it's used in a lot of th thermodynamic and, and st uh, uh, statistic, uh, uh, statistical mechanics kind of things where their particles are bumping into each other, Brownian motion, uh, thermal excitation. Here's the absolute temperature in degrees Kelvin, um, which is that capital T. And um, let's see. I guess I can't zoom in here. Is there a view? Yeah, I can. Here we go. Let's go to like 150. So here you can see that the voltage up here, this is the charge on an electron. That's a constant. K and T are constants. And K uh, over, well, KT over Q, this thing here in the denominator is about 26 millivolts equivalent at room temperature. And so this voltage is the voltage across the diode. So as this V up here gets bigger, um, you're going to start to see uh, this I get bigger. This 
initial current here, this is what flows when the diode is completely back biased by a lot of voltage. And it's, um, here's the one we're using is 2.5 nano amps, 10 to the minus ninth is nano. So there's 2.5 times 10 to the minus ninth amps, uh, you know, or 2.5 nano amps long. But once your voltage gets up to, uh, one volt all of a sudden you got 3.57 amps flowing and this is a version of the diode equation that just um, brings in this this uh, number n um, sometimes actually represented by eta a, a greek letter that looks like sort of like an n and it's a it, it's a non-ideality factor and makes the equation behave um, for real world diodes a little better um, and so spice simulators use use a model like that. So let's um, let's go back to our sorry let's go back to our uh, hundred percent. And we see um, there's the diode curve. It goes along. It seems almost flat because you know there's just a tiny amount of current flowing. And then, you know, somewhere around 0.7 volts for sure, this thing starts to take off and, 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 and current begins to flow. And if we zoom in here, we zoomed in from minus 1 to about plus 1 volts. Here we are at 0.5, we haven't got much flow. And 0.6, we start to see a little bit something. 0.7, there's, you know, definitely current flow. And 0.8, you're, you know, you got lots of current flowing. And by the time you get to 0.9 and, 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 uh, 1.0, um, you know, here you are up here at 3.57 amps. So these diodes turn on very, uh, very significantly. They're either, well, they're, they're kind of either on or off unless you are actually doing your electronics down in this region. Um, so, you know, uh, but we think of diodes as switching devices uh, for that reason. So let's take a look. Um, you know, e to the x is the inverse function of the natural log of x. That is to say, if I compose these two functions, so if I say, give me the log of e to the x, well, that's the same as saying, get, take e and raise it to the log x power. In both cases, it's equal to x because they're inverse functions. And when you compose one with the other, you just get back the original variable. And the diode equation is of the form I equals F, you know, some function of the voltage across the diode, V, v sub D. And the non-ideal equation is blah, 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 um, which is great. And you can look at this and say it's equal to this saturation current times this exponential factor minus this saturation current. So the diode equation I um, equals F of V, D, so it, it's where the current is a function of voltage. That's certainly an exponential form of e to the x. I mean, we this has been, uh, you know, this has been taught to us for a long time, um, which means the inverse function, which would be the voltage as a function of current, must be logarithmic. Okay, so let's go on to to um, uh, lab eight here. Um, if you click on this link, and let's hope it works. Uh, you hover over it in Google Sheets, and then this comes up, and you click on it, and boom, there's our, there's our circuit. And um, let me zoom in on this thing. Okay, so we have a logarithmic amplifier. What we have here, let's just look at this first uh, section. We've got an inverting amplifier, but instead of a feedback resistor, we've got a feedback diode. So we know that um, the way this thing works, current comes in, flows through this resistor, and the current can't go into the op amp because it's got a real high resistance input. So that current goes on and and flows through the diode. Now, as the, the output will sync that current, so it comes through here like this, and then the output will sync uh, uh, its fair share of it. 
But now I have a current going through the diode. Well, the voltage across the diode must then be um, logarithmic because we know current through the diode is an exponential function of the voltage across the diode. If I know the current going through the diode, the voltage must be a logarithmic function of that. And we know the current because we're driving it from a, a voltage source here. Uh, this happens to be a piecewise linear uh, voltage source. And I'm driving it through this resistor. Now, this node, the non-inverting node, is tied to my virtual ground. So this guy right here must be tied to virtual ground also. So um, what's going to happen is my output is going to be virtual ground minus the logarithmic voltage across the, um, across the diode. And such a... Um, such a circuit as this what will happen here is um, let's talk about this now um, I don't have my input voltage shown here but my input voltage is a ramp that goes up and I you know uh, we could show it if you want I can just for now I'll move it over but I'll take it back and of course we're looking at this link here so I'll call this sorry I'll call this just in we have out over there and we'll uh, resim and you can see my input voltage goes up as a linear ramp oops I'm sorry yeah input voltage is blue goes up as a linear ramp and then it's hard to see that this is not linear, but the output voltage down here goes up by a logarithmic, <coughs> pardon me, shape. And the way we can see that for sure is if we get rid of this one, if we get rid of this input again, then it won't be squeezing down the scale for us and we'll be able to see this output more clearly. And as the input went up linear, the output is going up with this logarithmic curve, okay? So in essence, I've got something at the output that's a, a version of the logarithm of the input, um, you know, and, and uh, I happen to be st stimulating this circuit with a ramp function um, that's linear but instead of getting a linear function out, I get this curved function because the diode takes that current and converts it into a logarithmic voltage. So, um, let me go back here. So that's how the circuit works is this guy converts the current coming through into a logarithmic voltage. This is nothing more than an inverting op amp, 10K in, 10K out and it just flips the, that um, curve that you saw. Let's see. It flipped the curve that you saw into a, a, a you know, a curved logarithmic um, uh, function instead of uh, the linear function that dr drove the input to the circuit. So there's, um, there's a linear to log converter. And as you can see, the input is uh, uh, an inverting log amp with 2.5 volt virtual ground. And it's feeding an inverting linear amp with 2.5 virtual ground. And that's why we get our nice log functions that curve like that out. And uh, here's the sim results that you already saw. And um, here's the sim results well, you saw something like that. Here's the sim results if you don't have the inverter in there, okay? And then here's the sim results if you do have the inverter in there. And that curve looks very much like a, like a logarithmic curve. And it is a logarithmic curve. So what we're asking you to do is please build the log amp shown ab above using your ADALP 2000 parts kit and your ADALM 1000 instrument. Use the AD8542 op amp as C note below, which has a weird pinout. This note here is just trying to show you what the pinout actually is. 
Um, let's see, for channel A, <clears throat> here's how you can set the minimum and maximum voltages on channel A and on channel B on the display. Um, and, and then uh, when I did it, now the problem is I used the, um, the sawtooth on the a down but the sawtooth on the a down uh you know different from my ramp actually slopes down and that's i mean that's okay it would be nice if it sloped up so it looked just like our sim but you see here instead of my logarithmic curves curving up this way my logarithmic curves are in essence curving up in that fashion but those are logarithmic curves um you know the input to the circuit is a linear <coughs> A linear ramp um, kind of reversed and the output is a, a, a logarithmic ramp also reversed in time um, so where do we use log amps what's the application of log amps um, if I put a signal into a linear amplifier this is my input voltage right here here's my output voltage so if I put a sine wave into this thing, you could actually draw a sine wave like this and put it in here, and the reflection you'd get would be the output um, of it, okay? And in this case, I'm putting in, um, well, let's say I came along here and I put in uh, between 1 and 3 volts, so I had something swinging like that. Well, my output would come here, that'd be about 5 volts, and I'd swing as high as about 15 volts. So for two volts in, I'd get, <clears throat> if two volts peak to peak in, I'd get 10 volts peak to peak out, which is a gain of about five, okay? And so um, there'd be no distortion. I'd get a nice reflection of my sine wave in. It could be a triangle wave, it could be a pulse, it could be whatever it is but it will be preserved as, as if looking in a mirror as it hits this guy and comes out, all right? Now, with a logarithmic amplifier, um, my transfer characteristic, uh, if, if, if I put in uh, various um, input DC voltages, I'm going to get out an output curve that looks like this. It's a classic log curve. And so, you know, that can be useful in a number of ways. Uh, one is as a power meter. We know that um, if, let's say, the resistance of a system is constant, we take the voltage and square it, divide it by the resistance, and we get the power. Well, the resistance is just a constant. We can always scale things, uh, you know, multiplying or dividing by a constant is just scaling something. So we know that P is proportional to V squared, which means that the, if I take the logarithm of both sides of it, the logarithm of P is propor proportional to the logarithm of V squared. And the logarithm of P is proportional to two times the log of, um, of, of V. So that, um, you know, by going to the log, I get a representation of the log of V. Two times the log of V is, you know, uh, going to be represent, going to be proportional to the log of the power. So dB is proportional to two log of V because dB is, you know, ex is is an expression of the power, uh, you know, at some, you know, in some place um, as a logarithm. Um, the compressor. <clears throat> The compressor, and you can read about this, uh, you know, you got people who speak very softly or very loudly, or you're playing in a band and you've got musical instruments that are loud and, and some that are soft. One of the things that can help you here is compression, because unlike putting your sine wave in here and getting a sine wave out, with compression, you put your sine wave in, you get some kind of wave out, but the more important thing is the louder the sound, um, the more compressed it will be. And the weaker the sound, you see how the slope is steeper over here? The, the weaker the sound, the more output you will get. <clears throat> so if you're careful about where on this curve you're operating and you don't try to um, put too big an input swing on it, you can get this effect of a variable gain amplifier uh, whose gain is based on how strong the signal actually is. 
And so the signal will be um, reduced and people will hear things um, more or less in the kind of the same volume range or, you know, same, same loudness. And that's, um, you know, that, that's where compression amps uh, find, find, their, uh, find their application is in, you know, taking out the, the killer strong signals and boosting up the, uh, the killer weak signals. So that's a compression amplifier. The spectrum analyzer is something you you will use in uh, in Professor Millet's communications course if you haven't already taken it. Um, you'll of course you'll measure power in decibels in there, um, or 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 decibels relative to some standard. So um, you know no, knowing that. Uh, a log amp is something that can convert to power from a linear, you know, kind of voltage. Uh, if you've already taken communications, or if not, when you do take communications, you will use an instrument called a spectrum analyzer. A spectrum analyzer takes uh, a signal input very much like an oscilloscope, but instead of uh, instead of displaying the signal, says instead of display the signal, instead of displaying the signal. Um, <clears throat> uh, in the time domain, it breaks the signal down into its frequency components and um, displays each frequency component's power in decibels on the vertical axis versus frequency on the horizontal axis. Because power is displayed in decibels, a log amp is a logarithmic amplifier is typically used to convert each signal of each signal's frequency components into the power uh, in dB for uh, display. These are just a few applications, blah, blah, blah. Now, um, anybody interested in guitar effects and, um, you know, equalization and uh, filtering and, um, uh, you know, nonlinear compression and that sort of thing, should look at the optional material that's in the uh, Blackboard site, <clears throat> and you can uh, you'll see there an example. Uh, you'll see some information leading up to, and then including the description of a an electric guitar, uh, uh, what they call uh, effects pedal, where you put the guitar into the pedal and then take the output of the pedal and put it into an amplifier. And uh, there's a soft distortion circuit called the Tube Screamer that's uh, pretty famous and makes a nice sound. It, it gives a, a nice, it, when properly adjusted, can give a nice creamy distortion sound for soft rock and that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, you can get nice sustain with that. Well, uh, the compression that occurs uh, to, to take the guitar signal and give it a sort of a, a, a rounded distortion is um, a log amp, uh, more or less. And so <clears throat> you can look in there and see how that how that is accomplished. Um, and then uh, you can see uh, I, I, I put some videos in there of um, of a simulation I did on an iPad showing those circuits um, um, and, and how they work. And you can do those simulations in um, easy EDA or, or LT Spice if you like. So. Um, now the lab for this thing is to build this circuit, so just go ahead and do that, and um, you know send me your screenshot and whatever read whatever directions I put in there. Hopefully I did, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right, take it easy, and um, we're almost to the end. So uh, uh, best wishes, and we'll we'll continue on with a couple more things, and then I think transmission lines and maybe a little bit of general electronic stuff, and then we'll call it quits. All right, take it easy. Bye-bye.